Good morning. Welcome to St. Cecilia's Parish and thank you for joining us this weekend. Today we observe the solemnity of the Assumption of the Blessed Virgin Mary. The readings may be found in today's Mass, Missalettes, on page 300. Please be respectful to the Lord in our midst and those around you by turning off your cell phones or placing them in a vibration mode so that it is not a distraction to others. Thank you for your consideration. The intention of our Mass this morning is for Joe and Jeanette Miller. Please stand and uh, greet the Lord who gathers in our midst and he makes us as one members of his body. We invite you to join in our entrance hymn number 172, Immaculate Mary, number 172. certainly gotten cooler. Of course, it might have helped the Red Sox, so let's begin. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. As we prepare to celebrate these most sacred mysteries of the Mass, let us call to mind our own sins and ask God for pardon and peace. Lord, you came to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. Christ, you are our Savior and Lord. Christ, have mercy. Lord, you are there always for those in need. Lord, have mercy. The Almighty God, have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to life everlasting. Glory to God in the highest and on earth peace to people of good will. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you, we give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. God, 
who, looking on the lowliness of the Blessed Virgin Mary, raised her to grace, that your only begotten Son was born of her according to the flesh, and that she was crowned this day with surprising glory, grant that through her prayers, that saved by the mystery of your redemption, we may merit to be exalted by you on high. We ask this through our Lord Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Please be seated. A reading from the book of Revelation. God's temple in heaven was opened, and the ark of his covenant could be seen in the temple. A great sign appeared in the sky, a woman clothed with the sun, with the moon beneath her feet, and on her head a crown of twelve stars. She was with child and wailed aloud in pain as she labored to give birth. Then another sign appeared in the sky. It was a huge red dragon with seven heads and ten horns, and on its heads were seven diadems. Its tail swept away a third of the stars in the sky and hurled them down to the earth. Then the dragon stood before the woman about to give birth, to devour her child when she gave birth. She gave birth to a son, a male child, destined to rule all the nations with an iron rod. Her child was caught up to God and his throne. The woman herself fled into the desert, where she had a place prepared by God. Then I heard a loud voice in heaven say, now have salvation and power come, and the kingdom of our God and the authority of his anointed one. The word of the Lord. Thanks. your right hand arrayed in gold. The queen stands at your right hand arrayed in gold. The queen takes her place at your right hand in gold of offer. The queen stands at your right hand, arrayed in gold. Hear, O daughter, and see, turn your ear, forget your people and your father's house. The queen stands at your right hand, Arrayed in So shall the king desire your beauty, for he is your Lord. The queen stands at your right hand. They are born in with gladness and joy. They enter the palace of the king. The queen stands at your right hand, arrayed in gold. reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, Christ has been raised from the dead, the first fruits of those who have fallen asleep. For since death came through man, the resurrection of the dead came also through man. For just as in Adam all die, so too in Christ shall all be brought to life, but each one in proper order. 
Christ the first fruits, then at his coming those who belong to Christ, then comes the end when he hands over the kingdom of his God and Father, when he has destroyed every sovereignty and every authority and power, for he must reign until he has put all his enemies under his feet. The last enemy to be destroyed is death, for he, sub for he subjected everything under his feet. The word of the Lord. set out and she traveled to the hill country in haste to a town of Judah where she entered the house of Zechariah and greeted Elizabeth. When Elizabeth heard Mary's greeting, the infant leapt in her womb and Elizabeth, filled with the Holy Spirit, cried out in a loud voice and said, Blessed are you among women and blessed is the fruit of your womb, Jesus. And how does this happen to me, that the mother of my Lord should come to me? For at that moment, the sound of your greeting reached my ears. The infant of my womb leapt for joy. Blessed are you who believed that what was spoken to you by the Lord would be filled. And Mary said, my soul proclaims the greatness of the Lord. My spirit rejoices in God, my Savior, for he has looked upon his lowly servant. From this day on, all generations will call me blessed, for the Almighty has done great things for me, and holy is his name. He has mercy on those who fear him in every generation. He has shown the strength of his arm and has scattered the proud in their conceit. He has cast down the mighty from their thrones and has lifted up the lowly. He has filled the hungry with good things and the rich he has sent away empty. He has come to the help of his servant Israel for he has remembered his promise of mercy, the promise he made to our fathers, to Abraham and to his children forever. Mary remained with her about three months and then returned to her home. This is the Gospel of the Lord. May the Gospel wipe away our sins. Please be seated. Today, it's the great feast of the Assumption of the Blessed Mother, body and soul, into heaven. And it fell on the 15th usually, but today, that year, we do it. And, uh, you know, it's one of the great feasts of the church. And about 140 years ago today, the National Acadian Day was observed in New Brunswick on this feast of the Assumption. For Louis XIII sent the French to settle the brave new world of North America, New France as it was called. They took with them their devotion to the Mother of God. Thus, on that first Acadian day, the abbot Marcel Francois Richard 
described those French men and women as a people who for over a century of hardships and persecutions were able to preserve their religious language, customs, and autonomy, all because they had imitated the mother of God. That same mother of God whom we celebrate today was assumed body and soul into heaven in imitation of the glorious ascension of her son, our Lord Jesus Christ. But there are really three, three elements I would like to talk about today. The first is Mary as the Ark of the Covenant, the Ark of the Covenant. Second is her resurrection, so to speak, and assumption into heaven. Mary, is, she was a human being like us. We too will be assumed into heaven with a body, soul, a spiritualized body, but the same body. And finally, we honor Mary, not as a passive witness, but as someone who's gonna help us. Mary was always known as the refuge of sinners, someone you could seek when you were in trouble, someone you would hang on to in times of peril. You may remember that old joke by uh, Bishop Sheehan. In heaven, uh, St. Peter, and Jesus were walking around. And uh, Jesus noticed, uh, he says, hey, how did some of these bums get in here? And he said to Peter, aren't you watching the front gate? He says, yes, I am, but your mother keeps letting them in through the window. So she's always been a, uh, been a refuge of sinner. The other interesting thing about the Old and New Testament, the Old Covenant and the New Covenant, Mary was seen as the new Eve not the old Eve. The old Eve was our mother in the physical order. The new Eve is our mother in the spiritual order. Disobedience caused the lack of our redemption. Mary's obedience, her fiat to be the mother of God, changed that. So the church calls her the Ark of the Covenant. And Mary, the Ark, as revealed in her visit to Elizabeth, we just read about. The ark traveled to the house of Obedon in the hill country of Judea. Mary traveled to the house of Elizabeth and Zechariah in the hill country of Judea. In Samuel, the book of Samuel, King David dances and leapt in front of the ark. He was overwhelmed by it. John the Baptist leapt in his mother's womb at the approach of Mary. David asks, how can the ark of the Lord come to me? And Elizabeth asks Mary, why is this granted to me that the mother of my Lord should come to me? In the Old Testament, David shouts in the presence of the ark. In the New Testament, in the New Covenant, Elizabeth exclaims with a loud voice and a cry in the presence of Mary. The ark remained in the house of Obedom for three months. Mary remained in the house of Elizabeth for three months. The ark returned to its home, and it ends up in Jerusalem, where God's presence and glory is revealed in the temple. Mary returns home and ends up in Jerusalem also, where she presents the child, God incarnate, in the temple. We can see that the parallels. Mary carried the word of God within her, the ark carried the Ten Commandments, the word of God to us. Mary was the new ark of the covenant. And the items, if we recall, what was in there, inside the ark were the stone tablets of the law. Within Mary was the word of God in the flesh. Also in the ark was the urn filled with the manna from the desert. The miraculous, the miraculous bread that came down from heaven when they were out in the desert and lost. Inside of Mary, the Ark of the New Covenant, the womb containing Jesus, the bread of life came down from heaven. And so we celebrate Mary for her instrumental work in our redemption. But also the Feast of uh, the Assumption tells us that Mary was, ass was assumed body and soul into heaven. Because she didn't sin in her lifetime, her body, like the body of Jesus, didn't decay. 
it went right to heaven. From a practical viewpoint, it reminds us that we too are destined to be in heaven someday, soul and body. We too, with our individual soul. We forget that in heaven we have a body. It won't be a physical body, but, but a spiritual one. But it will be our body. And speaking of the resurrection from the dead and the kind of body we have after it, Paul writes, some will ask, how can the dead be raised to life? What kind of body will they have? Paul answers that question, question by comparing our body before the death to a seed and our body after death to a plant that grows from that seed. St. Paul says, when you plant a seed in the ground, it does not sprout to life unless it first dies. And when you plant it, it is bare seed. God provides that seed, seed with a body he wishes. Finally, the assumption also reminds us that Mary is not in heaven in a passive way, simply enjoying God's presence. That is, she's not just sitting there, as it were, waiting for us to join her. On the contrary, Mary is in heaven in an active way. She's actively concerned about us. In other words, she wants to help us in our own struggles to reach heaven. We need only call out to her for help. Today we celebrate her great feast. And in conclusion, we should remember that the assumption of Mary was a precursor to our ascension into heaven. And in a practical message, it's that we too are destined to join her in heaven someday. And that in the meantime, she wants to help us in our own struggle to reach home. Finally, let us close by praying the following words that the angel Gabriel gave to Mary. Together we pray, Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Let us stand for our profession of faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made, for us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Let us now ask the Blessed Virgin Mary, who reigns in heaven for all eternity, to intercede on our behalf before the Lord. Please respond, Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for the Holy Catholic Church that we may continue to grow in holiness as we hear the word of God and observe it, as, as did Mary, the mother of God. We pray to the Lord. We pray for those who may be anxious about death, that their fears may be calmed, and they may come to see it, as Mary did, as a pathway to her son, 
We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for those affected by the wildfires and droughts out west, that God will give relief to the conditions, comfort to those affected, and protection to the first responders seeking to help. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray that may each strive to bring Christ into our world, imitating the Blessed Virgin Mary and taking on this responsibility. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for all those who have died recently, and at this Mass we pray for the repose of the souls of Joe and Jeanette Miller. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray also for all of our personal intentions, which we reveal now in the silence of our hearts. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Almighty God, you have blessed us with great things, and holy is your name. Come to our aid and grant the needs we bring before you, through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Please be seated. brethren, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God the Father Almighty. May this oblation, our tribute of homage, rise up to you, O Lord, and through the intercession of the most blessed Virgin Mary, whom you assumed into heaven body and soul, may our hearts aflame with the fire of love constantly long for you. We ask this through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For today, the Virgin Mother of God was assumed into heaven as the beginning and the image of your church's coming to perfection and a sign of sure hope and comfort to your pilgrim people on earth. Rightly, you would not allow her to see the corruption of the tomb. Since her own body, she marvelously brought forth your incarnate Son, the author of life and all holiness. 
And so in the company of the choirs of angels, we now praise you with joy as we all acclaim. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Hosanna in the Indeed, holy, O Lord, for you are the font of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it. He gave it to his disciples say, take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. Story of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and the blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world. Bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, Robert, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember your servants, Joe and Jeanette Miller, whom you've called from this world to yourself. Grant that they, who are united with your son in a death like his, may also be one with him in his glorious resurrection. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, the mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles, with Saint Cecilia, and with all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, that we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through 
him and with him and in him. O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may always be free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope in the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer each other some sign of peace. in the blood of Christ keep us all safe for eternal life.
is your gift to know God in your
Having received the sacrament of our salvation, we ask you to grant, O Lord, that through the intercession of the Blessed Virgin Mary, whom you assumed into heaven, that we may be brought to the glory of the resurrection through the Christ our Lord. Please bow your heads and pray for God's blessing. May God, who through the childbearing of the Blessed Virgin Mary, willed in his great kindness to redeem the human race, be pleased to enrich you with his blessing. Amen. May you know always and everywhere the protection of Mary, through whom you have been found worthy to receive the author of life. Amen. May you, who have devoutly gathered on this great feast day, carry away with you the gifts of spiritual joys and heavenly rewards. Amen. And may the blessings of Almighty God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit come down upon you and remain with you forever. Amen. We invite you to join in our recessional hymn, number 173, Hail Holy Queen Enthroned Above, number 173. please. We are cautiously optimistic about starting social events again in the parish. With that in mind, we are scheduling another country fest on September 11th from 5 to 9 in the, in the parish hall. We hope you'll join us for music, dancing, food, fun, raffles, and more. Tickets can be purchased at the rectory or Borbo's Market. Please see the bulletin for more details. And secondly, we are also looking forward to rescheduling our bingo again starting September 17th. But we cannot do it without volunteers to help us. Income from the bingo is a great help to our financial solvency. If you can help or would like more information, please contact Betty Ann at the rectory or reach out to her through email to see how you can assist. More information is available in the bulletin. Thank you. Sorry about those announcements. 